Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Brian Allen. I'm a freelance illustrator and part-time vigilante crime fighter. Today I'm going to take you through a three-part tutorial series on how to uh, how I create an illustration from pencil to ink to colors in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use, uh, the different processes, the different steps, how to conceptualize uh, an image, how to thumbnail, how to sketch, how to ink, and finally how to color uh, a piece of art. I'm going to be using brushes from my custom brush set I created. Uh, they're available for purchase at my website flylanddesigns.com and I also have many more video tutorials on how to use Clip Studio Paint also known as Manga Studio 5 uh, on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Let's get to it! All right, let's get right to it. So I want to walk you through how I set up an illustration real quick. So I opened up Clip Studio Paint or Manga Studio 5 and I'm going to start a new document. I like to work at 300 DPI and I'll just use a canvas of 20 inches by 20 inches. One of the first things I'll do when I start a new document is go to Window canvas new window and it's going to make a duplicate window of what I'm working on and I'll show you why that's so important you grab this and drag it over here and I'm gonna resize it so that it's just really small alright this little window here is very important because it will always give me a very tiny view of my piece as a whole. So as you can see, as I draw here, it will also appear in that smaller window. Okay, so what you want to do is go to select this other canvas, go to view, rotate invert, and flip horizontal. I have a shortcut set up for that so I can do it back and forth very quickly like this. What this will do is it will show you in real time what you're drawing but flipped. And while that, why that's helpful is this really helps you pick out errors in your drawing. Sometimes you get so used to looking at something for so long that even if it's incorrect, your, you know, your eyes might trick your brain into thinking everything's fine. Alright, the first thing I do is I have an action set up that prepares my piece. So I'll show you this here. What I'm going to do is run this action and all it's done is made three different layer groups. I have a layer group for the, the sketch, for the pencils, and for the inks. And anything I draw in this sketch layer is going to appear pink. Anything I draw in the pencils layer is going to appear like a, uh, a non-photo blue pencil and then the inks is just normal. I like to do this because it encourages me, instead of jumping right into the illustration, to really make sure I take the time to plan the piece first. Because I find that if I do not do that, the end result really suffers. So I'm going to go ahead and my first step is just blocking in the shapes of the character. And in this stage, I really want to stay way zoomed out because I'm really just working on the thumbnail. I don't want to get bogged down with details at this point. One of the most important steps at the beginning that uh, is often overlooked is just gathering all of your reference material. You have to actually approach the piece of artwork like it's a research assignment. What I do is sit down and identify some of the technical objects in my drawing, uh, some of the environments, the scenes, and search on Google for a while and gather as many different photos of, of all of these items, uh, all of these environments, and all of the different lighting uh, scenarios. Doing this really adds a lot of depth to your piece because if you're drawing an object that you've never drawn before, what can happen is you're relying too much on your brain's uh, interpretation of that item, which is fantastic uh, if you have drawn it many times before. But if you don't, 
you're essentially kind of making something up that may look right to you, but it's going to stick out like a sore thumb in your final piece. I also make a point to gather a lot of inspiration from other artists that I follow. This can be really helpful in encouraging you to try new color schemes and new styles that you maybe would not have. What can happen if you don't make a habit of doing this is you can fall into sort of a safe zone where you're continuously just you know falling back on the styles and the color schemes and the palettes that you are uh, used to. Um, you, if you do this too often, then your portfolio can kind of just end up being a jumbled mess because everything is going to blend together. Um, and you're going to be uh, avoiding those risks that sometimes make a successful piece. But you can often be too afraid to take these risks if you can't first see them being successfully uh, realized in other people's work. So right now, you can't see this on my screen, but I have a second monitor set up. And on that monitor is lots of different photos from different environments. Uh, I have a few color schemes picked out that I liked um, and some work of some of my favorite artists. Uh, and also work that I have done in the past too that I liked and wanted to uh, maybe replicate. All right, so this is the stage where everything can look like chicken scratch you know the point is just to scribble things out and most importantly to get the proportions right so now that I'm looking at this I am I'm not happy with some of the proportions here I think I want his legs longer his body bigger and his head smaller so I'm gonna go around and do a couple quick changes alright great so now that we've got everything really sketched out uh, and the proportions are okay. We're going to turn the opacity on this way the heck down because we just want the important parts of this drawing. That's it. Now we're going to go into the blue la line layer and begin our actual drawing. This too can be very rough because we're going to ink over it and the inking is going to be the detail of the drawing. And right now, the pencil I'm using is this uh, 6B real pencil that I created in my new, uh, in the volume two of my custom brushes. I've found that Clip Studio Paint has the best pencil engine uh, of any other software out there that I've tried, um, including Photoshop and Sketchbook Pro. There's something about the way that the pencils blend together and the way that you can very quickly erase them uh, by switching to drawing with transparency that just makes everything so much easier and feels more natural. Also, one of the greatest benefits is just being able to use the symmetry tools, which are unfortunately missing from Photoshop. If you're not familiar with Clip Studio Paint and you're used to using Photoshop, I've got a review on my YouTube channel that sort of breaks down some of the uh, 25 or so best features that the program has that I think Photoshop is lacking. Um, check it out because I think there's a lot of things in there that definitely make it a much, much, much stronger drawing program. As we're blocking this in, we want to make sure that we're always mindful of where the light source is. In this case, uh, there's a light coming from the top left, 
and also a really strong light from way behind the creature uh, from the bottom. Um, so there's going to be a strong rim light around the whole thing and the way that you make this come across in your inks is just to make sure that anything opposite the direction of the light has a bolder, thicker line. Since this artwork is a tribute to the character Peace from the movie Wizards by Ralph Bakshi, uh, I want to make sure to really give uh, my, own, my own style to it, uh, my own character. I think that this is actually a great exercise, is to take a character and a piece of artwork that is well known and already created and sit down and give your own spin to it because it allows you to really focus on the style of it since the foundation has already been laid down. All right, great. So now what I do before I start inking is I will take these pencils and brighten them up a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm going to go in really quickly one more time with a really hard pencil like this, like this detail brush or the, let's see, like the fine point brush here or also the square dark pencil is good, but let's, let's do this one. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just go in and clean up certain details that I think need work. It doesn't mean, I do not need to go back and trace over everything because that would just take way too much time. I'm pretty much just pumping up some of the lines and correcting things that need to be corrected. Now you can do a lot of this during the ink stage, so don't put too much time into this part. But the better your pencil drawing works, uh, the, the better your inks are going to come out because you're going to spend less time fixing errors and, and more time just rendering things. I like to use this method to draw over top of my, uh, my first round of pencils rather than creating a new layer and just drawing from, uh, from the bottom up and then turning off the sketch layer. 
the reason I do that is because I can still, when I'm inking, I can still see all the other lines, which maybe aren't as committed uh, or as accurate, but they they do still sort of help me get grasp the form of the image. And there's a lot of like spontane spontaneity in that first round that you don't want to lose when you're inking. And at this point, I haven't really even, I haven't looked at my reference in a long time. The reference was mainly just to get the, the pose and the, uh, the general composition down. Since I'm trying to do my own take on the creature and, and piece the character, I want to make sure that I'm not looking at it too closely. I've got a human, sc or not a human skull, but a, a fake human skull model that I got from Amazon in my office. Um, it was real cheap. I think it was only like 20 bucks. I would definitely recommend grabbing that if you draw skulls a lot, because it definitely helps to have the real thing to look. Okay, great. All right, so I think we are ready to ink this guy. Now let me show you my setup for inking. One last thing I like to do once the pencils are done is I like to grab a shading brush. Let's let's grab this. Let's grab the Copic shade. No, not that one. Yeah, let's do this one. All right, um, and I'm just going to go in real quick and just draw where I think a lot of the mid-tone shadows might be. This helps me when I start inking because it reminds me about the total value of this piece and also where the light source is coming from. Because none of this line, this shaded line I'm doing right now is actually going to be seen in the inks. That's mainly going to be taken care of in the coloring stage. But it helps me to plan ahead to know where those areas are. All right, great. So we're all finished with the pencil drawing and we're ready to start inking. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about what resolution settings I use, how I get, uh, get prepped for the inking process, and some tips and tricks that I used during that process.